past is history, the future mystery, this moment is the gift, every second It's Dr. Sarah Larson in the house. We are at UBN Studios at Sunset Gower. This is the oldest studio in Hollywood. Here with my amazing, gorgeous, that was his song. Past is history. That's right. This moment is with Greg Larson. Woo-hoo! <laughs> Welcome, Miracle Makers. Thank you for joining us again today for another amazing experience, a channeled experience, I would say. These are very powerful. This is a very powerful container, and I love being here with you. and being in the mystery of the moment and seeing how it unfolds. It's always a beautiful experience. We love sharing our date. (laughs) (laughs) This is our date, exactly. This is our date with you guys. We love it because we value you. We value us. We value love. And what we're here to create for you today is a mind, body, soul connection Mm. for you miracle makers. We've been talking a little bit about our morning routine and just the blissful way in which we've gotten to experience the mind, body, soul connection. We want you to have everything we have and more for you to embody your soul's purpose. And so we brought in the miracle makers in our lives (laughs) that are helping us at five o'clock in the morning. Just if you can, if it's a safe space for you to close your eyes, I want you to just imagine yourself arriving and waking up in meditation to this sound. Archangel Ra, I am, and Archangel From before my birth, I'm calling it in into the sacred circle of light. I'm calling it in into the sacred circle of light. Calling it in into the sacred circle of light. Prosperity, peace, we're calling it. Into the sacred circle of life. Emotions release, we're calling it in. Into the sacred circle of life. We're calling it in. We're calling you guys in. (laughs) We're calling in your mind, body, soul connection to be here with us, to hear that was beautiful, amazing, Athena Starseed in the <laughs> house. <laughs> We've got also with us, oh my gosh, Brian Matthews, who is the incredible beats, the rhythm, the heartbeat of the mind-body-soul connection that we do in the morning. Athena leads us in meditation and these great dialogues that she's learned over the years as being a student, studying with gurus, being amazing in Hollywood, being into fitness. She's got an incredible life story that I can't wait for you to hear. And Ryan brings in the beats to match the sounds of what we're learning and to activate us with the soundscape that beautifully moves in. And it's such an incredible experience. We we are transported to another place <laughs> in the universe. <laughs> I don't know if it's in Los Angeles or not. I don't know where we're at when we're in that space. But anyways, 
I'm very grateful to both of you for bringing us to that place every morning. And then we, you know, connect and hug at the end and say goodbye. And then we step out of the building and then we're in our normal life and driving a car and talking about our plans and what we need to do and our to-do list. And it's like, wow, that place was so different and so healing and so nurturing on so many levels. I'm so grateful to both of you. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're grateful to you for bringing us here today. Uh, yeah, it's, it's truly our pleasure. I, we, I, I am intentioning for everyone to know your websites and to get the music that you both make. And for all of the festivals that you are part of, for all those that are listening around the world, you can get to these festivals. And it's a great thing to participate in. Athena, I, I want to start with you because you started Into Fitness long before it was really cool <laughs> to be in fitness or into yoga, into our bodies, and long before most people got an understanding of the mind-body-soul connection. In the East, it's understood, but here in the West, everything's so separate, and especially growing up, how did you get, at, how did you get into this? Um, initiation by fire. <laughs> I was uh, born an athlete and uh, very um, much on the trajectory to go to the Olympics as a gymnast. And at 10, I um, got diagnosed with a very rare bone disease, and I was sentenced to a wheelchair for the next four years. Mm. And I had um, some really serious talks with the divine about why I would be having this experience. And um, I wanted to die when I, when I got diagnosed, I really told my mom, drive this van off the road because if I can't use my legs, I'd rather be dead. And she just pulled over and she, I mean, this is so emotional for me. She said, um, if you go, I go. Mm. And I said, okay, well, I don't want you to go, so let's work it out. Mm. And so we prayed and she took me to shrine after shrine and we had people lay hands on me and we went to different temples. And, um, and then a little 11-year-old boy that had the same disease that I did that read about me in the newspaper because I had happened to be in the newspaper, came to my home and taught me how to meditate. And from the mouths of babes, he told me that I could talk to the cells in my toe and the cells in my ankle and the cells in my knee and the cells in my thigh and the cells in my hip and the cells in my bones. And that I could heal myself through connecting with that infinite, infinite, infinite potential that God lives inside of us. So I started doing that. And um, then I heard... I heard the voice, the inner, inner, inner still voice that said, this is only temporary. So I had to go through a lot of anger to be in a body cast as a hyper child and not being able to move. Once I got in touch with that, when God said, this is temporary, then I started to go, okay, I have to wait out the karma and see it as a gift. I had no idea jumping into the future that I would be teaching people to get out of what cripples them from low self-esteem to their body fat suits to just self-loathing or addiction, whatever that thing that cripples people that I had to go through my physical crippling to get the initiation at age 11. Wow. And most of us <laughs> get initiations you know, at different times in our life. Sometimes it's a midlife crisis. Sometimes it's a divorce. Sometimes it's a death. Sometimes it's a rebirth. Or but a job loss. A job or... loss, exactly. And so I started to appreciate the gift of walking. And then as soon as I got out of the wheelchair and I started walking again, I, in a nutshell, I got a free pass to Bali's from Jiffy Loop for two weeks. Yeah. And I went every day. And then the, 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 the last day, I was like, I got to come back here the next day. So I did. And the manager said, you can't really sneak in. You've already had two weeks for free. You either have to work here or buy a membership. And I was like, you mean I can work here? I can work here? You can pay me to exercise? And, and that was it. And I started training and working for the gym. And then my classes started filling up. And then there was like a line. And then I was teaching five days a week. And that was in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. And then in college, another initiation came. My brother, when I was on a full theater scholarship, he committed suicide. He took his life. Mm. And I thought, again, I don't know if I want to live. What kind of world am I going to live in? My brother, who was almost my twin, took his life. And so I said to God, underneath a, a, a midnight sky full of bright stars, where do you want me? Because I don't want to go back to school. I, I want to go out and help people right now. Because if my brother got encouraged, like I could encourage people, maybe he wouldn't have died. 
So I wished, show me a sign. Show me, show me three shooting stars, and then I, I'll do whatever you want. Boom, boom, boom. Three shooting stars within a matter of five minutes. I got offered a free flight to L.A., I got to live with Marianne from Gilligan's Island, who put me up. I started my <laughs> acting career at Universal Studios for stunt work. And all of a sudden, it was like TV, radio, film. Everything started opening up because I was willing to do whatever that little tiny voice. And, and everybody has it. Everybody knows when God says, go here, do that, turn left. But I don't want to turn left. Turn left in the car. <laughs> turn left. And so I started uh, the boot camp in 1994. And it was out of my stunt work. I was working at Universal. And then, again, I got into a job where they paid me to exercise, jumping off of buildings and scaffolding. And I was like, this is what we need in fitness, because I had been training in the gym, and it was boring, and I had, like, we have to get into the theater of it and mm. get into the play of it and the play of it. So I invented a program where you could play, you could be on purpose, and you could tune in to why you were born and what your life contract was. So then I did that for a good 15 years. And then it wrapped up again. I lost everything. I lost my million dollar house. I lost my company. God said, this is only temporary. Stop teaching. And then I went underground for seven years and it was like, fill your cup up. And I learned with shamans and yogis and babas and masters from all over the world. And then at Christmas time, I said, what do you want from me next? I don't know what to do. And they were like, okay, in January, the energy is going to change and you're allowed to come back out and you can now share. And so I just consider what I'm doing sharing. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Wow, Miracle Makers, there's so <laughs> yeah, many so pearls. Many love bombs there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many pearls of wisdom. I want to mm. thank you for inviting us to be part of your boot camp. And we are truly, truly blessed. And the story that you just shared about being 11 years old and having this diagnosis or learning to meditate from an 11 year old, a child comes in, your mom didn't know or exactly what to do, but to take you from space to space to have that movement. And in the movement without really knowing the direction, a little 11 year old sage comes in and says, talk to your body talk to your body this little sage knows what we know in science today the mind body spirit connection mm -hmm. your body's always listening it's always listening to you and it's always believing in you and it's your partner this is what you carry through life mm -hmm. that it can overcome any dis-ease any limitation, and it will also create noise in this form of a bodysuit or in the form of a sore joint because it's a two-way dialogue that's occurring. So miracle makers, really to get that, your cells are talking to you and for you to talk to your cells. Mm. We do that. We're doing yoga, and it's like my body's liquid light, my <laughs> my heart's liquid light, my muscles are liquid light, and I I literally talk to my body at that point, and I'm just reveling in these words that I'm sharing with my cells and my because I, I know it works. I know there is that connection is there, and so it's a powerful you know practice right there. That beautiful thing about the triangle that we quite often see or the trilogy, mind, body, spirit, mind, body, Holy Spirit. Um, and one of the things that's amazing is when we really understand spirit and our connection to spirit, like you did at that young age, you understood, oh, something happens to me when I'm physically moving. What are some of the things that you've seen with the Hollywood stars, with the stuntmen, with uh, in yourself, these miracles that come through when people wake up to the aha connection with their body? Mm. Um, well, your body, like you said, is like a um, it's a tuning fork. And yes. so it can let you know you can read your body and it can let you know where you're at. And for for me, being an athlete and a stunt woman we were very in tune with our bodies because if you have one wrong move, you could break your neck. If you're falling off a one story building, if you're, if you're doing a jump or, you know, stunt fighting or, or shooting a pistol, you have to be very focused and, and precise. And I, when I started studying the mystery schools, they're really talking about focused energy and 
athletes know how to focus and channel <laughs> their energy. Mm. So one of the things I saw in my third eye when I was in my body cast from here all the way down, and I had to lay flat on my back in the heat of the summer in Florida, so hot, um, God showed me that I would be running a marathon. And so the body cast was from your chest From my chest all the way down. And they, they cut part of my hip off, and they screwed it in with two long screws, and they reassembled it. Horribly painful. Mm. Yes. And then I was oh. stiff, so I was in that body cast, and, and they had to rework me. But um, when I my third eye opened and it sh saw me running a marathon, then after I started walking again, my goal was to run that 26-mile, 26 26.2-mile 26 marathon. Mm. And it was all about... Athens and the the marathon and there's a whole story about how you overcome your mental chatter yes. and it's sheer will. So you were talking about the third chakra before we started and our intentions, which are really important. So my intention for my training was to finish at the finish line. So I would see the finish line ahead of time and then I would train my mind to run to the finish line in my mental meditations way before I started physically training and then I planned out six months and then I figured out how I'd go from three miles to one mile to six <laughs> miles to two miles to 18 miles to nine miles until you get to yes. 26 and it takes six months by the time I got to the Marine Corps Marathon in 1999 at mile 14 my back went out and I and I my legs are uneven, so it's easy for my back to go out. And I had a pinched nerve, and it was sheer will, which is mm. like yogic yes. training, to overcome pain and tell your body to finish. Mm. And so, finishing in six hours and fifteen minutes, which most people <laughs> that is like a long time. Yeah, my goal was to complete that for my body contract, and that allowed me to actually see that we can create any miracle, any time, any place. And so, with the celebrities that I train. They're like athletes. They came out with a desire. They moved to Hollywood. They knew exactly what they wanted. They stayed focused on their craft. And then they materialized those dreams. And so it's easy to take a Hollywood mm. celebrity and get them into an athletic mindset because they're really already there. And mm. woo, pearl after pearl. Uber ever. focus. <laughs> Uber focus. Just like laser pointed focus. Yes. Yeah, that's so critical. That focus. Yeah. And um, what Gandhi said, strength doesn't come from physical capacity. It comes from an in, um, dem, ah, indomitable, oh, I can't say the word for some reason, will. It's our will power that creates the ability to overcome anything. It's our willpower. And if you look at the Holy Trinity, the mind, you shift the mind everything else shifts. You shift the body, mm -hmm. everything else shifts. You shift your spirit to the will of source, to the will of what you visioned to come forward. And that's exactly what happened. What the signals were in your body, you took over. And the ancient mystery school teachings talk about the initiate having to come, overcome the mind chatter, overcome the body limitations in order to will into existence mm. what has been willed in vision by the Holy Spirit. And mm. so it's <laughs> it's quite incredible. And for those that are listening, most of us don't have those huge obstacles of, of things in our body to overcome of that nature. Uh, but we create some very big obstacles for ourselves when we start to tune in with our body, when we start a practice of waking up in the morning, when we start really willing into existence and creating our day because we want to be the masters of our own consciousness, the masters of our own will, the masters that make miracles for ourselves and others, it's incredible what comes through us. Our mind can talk. What are some of the limitations that you've seen people overcome? Um, I can't get up in the morning. It's too early. Um, my body has an ache over here. Um, I'm not a morning person. These are like limiting beliefs. And I will never um, argue for your limitation. <laughs> ever, ever. I will not defend your weaknesses. No, I, I mean, I will not defend your um, inadequacies. I will only defend basically your purpose. Yes. And, and if you got sent to me in any way, shape or form, first of all, I know you got sent to me for a reason. 
I know that the gifts I have to share with you will actualize your blind spots as you are actualizing mine. Like, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. This is the most beautiful couple. And I was telling Greg this morning, you guys are my superhero avatars because what you harmonize is the divine twin flame relationship on the planet. And the new energy for this Aquarian age is not a solo mission anymore. It's about taking your partner, your divine masculine partner. And um, although we're not, you know, romantic partners, (laughs) we are business partners. It's the same. That alchemical marriage is really about both sharing our talents. So when Ryan came on board, he basically, he's like a tuning fork. He's like a tuning instrument. He tunes us up to the harmonic frequency of the universe and puts us in 432 so that we can get back into homeostasis. And I wanted him to talk about that because the music he creates and designs is very shamanic and it's also very alchemically to get you focused on that free will and that third chakra to materialize what you came here to do, to mm. give back, to contribute. <laughs> it's such a beautiful thing to understand that our bodies are tuning forks, as you said, yeah. mm. and the tuning frequencies occur early in the morning. And then they reoccur every time we listen to music and every time we're passionate and you bring such passion in to every session and to all of the work that you do, every th- part that I've seen you do. So, Ryan, please share with us th- um, some of your work and what comes through. Well, and, tell, and tell him your training, too, when you were a kid, because he's a professional musician. I mean, he's like the real <laughs> deal here. Yeah, well, it's talking about this tuning up uh, metaphor here is really interesting because I've spent years of my life playing in an orchestra or lots of orchestras. And what's the first thing that the orchestra does before it starts its concert? Tunes up. Mm. So yes. the oboe plays a note, and everybody listens for a few seconds, and then they pick up the instrument and they match it and make whatever adjustments they need to make. Oh, that makes <laughs> and then when everybody feels like they're in tune, then we go on this journey together. Mm. And you don't even have to think about being in tune anymore because you're in tune, you've done the work. And then maybe you have to check in later and that's kind of the practice for us, too. We tune, in, tune up in the morning. All right, we're in tune, going about our day. Oh, but now something feels off at 3 p.m. and I'm not feeling good. All right, let's do a little mindfulness meditation for 10 minutes. And it's like retuning back up, mm. doing a little micro adjustment there. OK, now we're back. And uh, that's it's really been a great experience for me to be a part of these morning sessions and, and filling this role of, of that kind of tuning master or pitch uh, like tuning fork in mm-hmm. some ways um, be, and I guess metaphorically I would be the oboe <laughs> yeah, you are the oboe in that the one. Oboe yeah, yeah. The analogy. <laughs> yeah. what's amazing is the ability to I, f- I want miracle makers to get this if you're feeling out of sorts you bump your toe you stub you, something traffics off tune into yourself tune yourself And the universe becomes harmonious around Mm -hmm. you again. Athena, you mentioned the signs, the three stars in a row flashing so that you could know and connect and communicate with the universe, communicate with the external environment. And what Ryan's sharing is this ability, you listen first to the sacred sounds that are Mm -hmm. being created, then you tune Mm -hmm. yourself. And one of the most open times to be able to tune it ourselves is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. before the sun comes up, the way that our hormonal systems work, the way the human biology works between 3 to 6, we release all of these peptides and proteins that allow us to listen deeper and allow us to connect with the harmonic resonance of the universe of this earth and of the environment that we're in and so are this miracle makers to have a miraculous life whenever you wake up begin by tuning yourself into the frequency that's around you, and then to bring your own note, your own sound to match that. Mm. And then how does one get led in the orchestra? 
the conductor. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be source. <laughs> that would be source if we're, if we're working the metaphor here. Yeah. And each player in the orchestra is contributing a unique voice to this homogenous, unified sound that wouldn't be the same if any of them weren't playing. So, so show up for yourself. Yeah. Show up for so. yourself. And what's important with the when we measure the instrument, the amount of hertz one instrument makes, it's at a certain level. When you put two instruments together, it multiplies. Mm -hmm. It's again. not an addition. It's a multiplication of the sound. So the sum of two parts synergizes and creates some harmonies that would not exist. And so when we bring it back to, in this age, it's the twin flames, the masculine and the feminine within us being tuned together, it's the sum of two parts synergized to greater and greater. And you don't have to have a romantic partner or even the opposite sex. Yeah. Wherever two of like mind come together, the natural frequency of things is one will come into the role as the masculine energy. The other will come in as the feminine energy as they continue to balance themselves and continue to create. That's just how nature mm -hmm. occurs. We breathe in unless we're walking together at opposite times in order to harmonize. When we're resting together, when we're walking, then our breaths become the same and in nature everything becomes either masculine or feminine mm. the earth receives from the sun and so the earth in that role the masculine being the giver the earth receives from the sun so the earth is feminine when it, in comparison to the sun we receive from the earth Everything we've eaten, everything we've consumed, mm. we're wearing, everything. So to, uh, we're masculine. The earth is masculine to us. Right. We're feminine to the earth. And then throughout our day, we breathe out. We exhale. And what we're breathing out is exactly what the trees need. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're giving to the trees. And the trees, in a similar manner, are creating. They're generating fruit. And so at different times, different parts, we're each playing the masculine feminine role. And if we get and tune ourselves and we move through life, our day, moment to moment, tuned, we're able to pick up whether we need to be feminine, the receiver or the masculine, the giver in that moment. Another metaphor that comes to mind is uh, the liquid and the container. It's a very powerful dynamic in cooperation with two, two people, two whatever. And, um, and I think there's a direct parallel. I think the liquid kind of represents a feminine energy. It's fluid. It's moving. It's not really in homeostasis, but the container are more of a masculine, right? Yes. And uh, there's a, a lot of examples of creative duos and creative pairs who have played out this dynamic, um, like John Lennon and Paul McCartney being a prime example, like John Lennon being usually the liquid, but you can switch roles depending on the situation <laughs> as well. There's also the star and the director dynamic, right? Mm. But it's all this, the power of, um, this all started with talking about the metaphor of playing together, two, yes. two frequencies so. coming together. And so that's so beautiful. And I think the metaphor of the liquid in the container is also important when we talk about our will. For ourselves, we must become the container, these structured ways of being to allow the fluid source mm. to come through and generate what it is that we need. And you knowing how to talk to yourself, knowing how to talk to your body, Athena, when you were running, the marathon, your body was structured and the vision is there. Miracle makers, get your finish line. Get your finish line. See yourself already crossing it. Yeah. See yourself already crossing it and let everything else about you become fluid and let it let go. What no longer needs to be held, you create the structure around it. 
Well, I think that's the big challenge, though. You know, if you have a marathon, there's kind of a, um, a very specific, you know, finish line. But when you're talking about your life's journey, your soul's purpose, yes. how do you tune into that, what that finish line might be? And obviously, it even changes along the way. Well, there, there's down. many, I'll say this, there's many finish lines. Yes. So um, for me, it was about sitting in a silent space. And I had to do that because God put a cast on me and said, you're not going to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I learned stillness at a very young age. And when you sit in that silent space, God will tell you this, just, just the next 500 feet. And then you cross that finish line and then you get the next 500 feet. And then you cross that finish line, you get the next. So you're in a constant state of beingness and being yeah. present. And I want to talk about presence for a second because that's where the miracles happen in yes. the presence. Yeah. And my friend Jim Hipple is one of my master teachers. Hello, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when I finished my yogic training, um, I ended up going to a present moment master. And basically what he was really saying to me is that in the present, everything's here right now. Like if you're going to build a house and you're like, oh, I don't know how to build a house. Like if you can really get present, the hammers show up, the nails, the boards, the foundation, the crew. Like if you build it, they will come. So if we can all like drop into presence, it's a vertical. See, here, here's the horizontal, which is past and future, which is like, I regret myself or I don't exist because I'm not in the future yet. But the vertical is... When you're vertical and you say, I'm present, God can pour down in the intuition. Talk to that person right there. Yeah. They, or, or go say hi to this person. Or like, this is how we met. I was open to the universe. And I'm constantly talking to the universe. And I said, send me my partner specifically if you want me to go back to work. Because <laughs> I'm not doing this alone anymore. I was already a solo act. And it was tiring and not nearly as fun. <laughs> so I showed up at Full Circle in Venice, which is a very hot spot for those of you who are local in California. And we were at a fundraiser and we connected. And then I gave him my card and then you lost it or you misplaced it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I hear, and all of a sudden, one day out of the blue, he calls me, he goes, remember I met you at that event? And he was getting ready to go into the studio and John, uh, David Bowie had just died. Mm -hmm. And I was like, David Bowie wants to talk to you. And I started channeling for him a message about David Bowie and then he wrote a song. You can talk about that. And he immediately put it in a song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, the, the meaningful coincidences and little synchronicities that lined up around our meeting was really interesting to me because the re only reason that I was at that event at Full Circle was because I was just wandering around Venice going where the flow was taking me. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Huh? And I walked by Full Circle and I was like, I really want to go in there. Something about it was just calling me. I walked in. Bam. So <laughs> there you go. And that's how life, that when you're in the mystery, when you're in the magic, when you're in the miraculous, that's how meetings happen. That's how connections are made. Yeah, yeah. It's such a beautiful point. Um, and there's so many, Greg, from your life that you can share where the miraculous is tuned in because you're tuned in and yeah. you're in flow like Ryan and Athena. Well, you know, actually, the, the one thing that's super calling me right now to share is because I think this is so critical. You talked earlier about the whole orchestra tunes into the oboe. And so if, if you yourself cannot be the oboe, you need to find that oboe in your life so you can tune yourself. Mm -hmm. Because nowadays, there is so much things that are not oboes. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at us, billboards and commercials and pop-up ads on Facebook. I mean, everywhere there's someone trying to be your oboe and they're not tuning you to mm -hmm. your best interest. And the reason like, that it's the oboe is because the oboe has the purest sound. Oh, you go that's find so the purest yes. sound. Yeah, that's so critical. That is miracle so miracle important miracle. to say that. <laughs> yeah, what is the purest sound in, that you can find in your life, and what is not a pure sound? Because we don't watch the news. I don't read the news. That's it's right. like it's so. Know. It's and it's and there, it's just not meaningful to me at all because I can tell within it's not a pure sound for my journey. And so you might want to watch the news. That's fine. If it's a pure song for your gene, please do that. But all I'm asking you is to really go deep into your life and your experience and find the pure sound that can guide you. And I would say highly in the morning, the first thing that you do mm. is if habitually you've turned on the news or you've turned on music or if you've turned something habitually on, to not turn on the news in the morning. That's a good not one. It's a great piece of advice. And, and social media, same uh, the thing. The social, yeah, social media, media anything thing, that yeah. you've habitually done yeah. in the morning to let yourself to truly tune in 
and even ask what the purpose for that day might be. You might already have it planned and scheduled, but the purpose can be greater than what the to-do list is (laughs) if you allow yourself to tune in. Quite often, I've tuned in in the morning and my, my inner voice, my inner source, my inner connection will say, drive a little slower today. Hmm. And I avoid an accident or they will say, call such and such in those morning moments where I'm tuning my frequency to the universes, to the earth, to those around me's frequency. I will hear what I need to do Hmm. as part of my purpose for that day. And it has served me so well Hmm. (laughs) to have that experience. You know, I want to just give uh, some suggestions about tuning in to find yes. the oboe of, of, of your life. Um, it's as easy as going outside and looking at the sky mm. to tune in, to see the divine in the sky, in the infinite, infinite, infinite sky. And after living with the yogi, uh, Tapas Yogi Nandi, hello, Tapas Yogi Nandi, <laughs> um, he taught us that the sky is, is, is a reflection of God mm. and that Shiva where it actually says Siva, because they, they save energy by saying Siva in the south, in southern India. Siva, C is the spirit, and Va is the experience. And so the spirit is tuning in, Siva is tuning in to the spirit, having the human experience. Let Siva breathe through me. Let Siva see through me. Let Christ walk through me. Let Buddha sing through me. Like all of the masters. And so if you can walk outside and tune into the sky, or if you can touch a tree, or if you can put your feet on the earth, mm. those yes. are really good oboes. Yes. <laughs> and I would like him to talk about 432 because nature's already tuned to that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and what that means, 432, is uh, hertz, 432 hertz, which means that in one second, there's 432 oscillations mm-hmm. um, or sound waves. Um, Typically, we tune to 440, 440, um, being the note A, right? So actually, I was very resistant for years to 432 hertz music because of all the time I did spend in orchestra, and the oboe was playing 440. That that was it. And I remember getting into like little discussions or debates with other orchestra members about oh, I can tell the difference between 440 and 439. Can you? <laughs> well, can, right? and, and some orchestras like in Europe tuned to 439 or 438, and we were like, oh, you know, like faux pas, right? Uh, <laughs> that was just the attitude that, that we were at then. So 432, oh, that's way too far out of tune. Like if, if you listen to them side by side, it's, it's noticeable. 432 sounds flat. It sounds low. But, but it feels so good. It feels good. <laughs> it difference. really does. And once I let go of that resistance to just trying it and writing my own music in 432 hertz and forgetting that 440 was ever a thing, okay? So now yeah. I'm sitting at my keyboard and I've tuned it all to 432 and I'm just playing. And I'm like, okay, I, this doesn't sound wrong to me. Actually, this sounds really nice. Let's keep going with it. And the first um, piece that I ever wrote in 432... Um, I started to it, it started to fly. You know, um, it, creative people probably know this feeling of sometimes when you're creating, things just line up and it just goes. Um, and in in two hours, I had an entire seven minute um, piece uh, written, and I picked up my trombone and started playing along with it, and tuned my trombone to be in tune. So now my trombone is in 432 hertz tuning, oh. and by the end of uh, probably two or three hour session. I was literally buzzing. (laughs) (laughs) And this is not a feeling I'm used to feeling after a session like that. Like, it was just fantastic. And that's why I knew, like, I have to keep doing this. And really, 440 is is a nice, even, round number, right? Um, And there's a lot of stories as to how and why we adopted that as our standard of tuning, which I'm not really going to go into, but suffice it to say that it's not necessarily the most harmonious with the laws of nature and the laws of universe. They've Mm. actually found that in 440 causes disease, causes anxiety. Mm -hmm. What you normally listen to over and over again on the radio causes that frequency. And so waking up in the morning or putting your feet on the earth, or connecting with the sky, or 
listening to the heartbeat of a beloved mm. um, arm in arm, listening, really, truly listening to nature sound, waterfalls. And that creates the harmonic frequency. It was uh, found in 1952-1953s. Schumann, I believe, Schumann. measured the frequency of the earth and harmonic frequency. Mm -hmm. And that was when it was 432. Going back to, for convenience, for math, for maybe other reasons as well, mm -hmm. 440 was chosen instead of multiples of a frequency that creates harmony. Yeah. And so... Mm -hmm. Because um, the 8 hertz, eight hertz frequency is, um, if you double a frequency, you go up an octave, right? Yes. So we double 8, we go to 16. We double 16, we go to 32. And if we keep going up 5 octaves, we hit 256 hertz. And that is the note C, if we are tuned to 432 being A. Which is the middle C, which our body recognizes, our heart mm -hmm. and our chakras, these energy centers within our body resonate and sing along. <laughs> I, 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 I want to I jump in because when you said the eights double, mm -hmm. um, I had a very shamanic experience where I got sucked out of my body and I went into the center of the universe. And I got shown that the universe is broken into dimensions and they're all on octaves and they're all on musical bands and that the planets make sounds and even though we can't hear them they're they're on these like strings and they're making these sounds like records and everything is vibrating and then I saw how sheet music got created because we're on a spiral and if you took a piece of paper and you wrapped it around a spiral grid you'd see the lines of all of the notes on these octave bands and when God is 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 pouring that cosmic energy through the top of the crown he's showing you that every Every organ vibrates to a certain sonic resonance. And if the liver is sick, you could give it a sound frequency instead of a pharmaceutical drug, and you could put the liver back in tune. You could also play it back into tune. So this is why we partnered up, is because I wanted to use the physical body as an instrument, and I needed the sound, the, the, the sound landscape, to harmonize that homeostasis. So when we partnered up, I said, let's listen to some fitness music, mm -hmm. and then I'd like you to take this and make fitness music that will tune people up instead of getting them out of tune the first thing in the morning yes. working out. So we actually listened to some music, and we worked out to it, and then he put on 432, and he mixed beats. It was a huge <laughs> difference, remember? I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I just felt like I went into another dimension. Yes. My, my body cells started to sing. So something that's different and unique about the program that we're doing, it's like alchemical fitness it's shamanic fitness it's where ceremony meets the body cell celebration on all the different dimensions the physical body is our first layer but then we have the emotional body as the second body and then the mental body is the third body and then the cellular body and the etheric body and so he as as an as a trained classically trained musician touring all over the world in symphonies can bring that to our class and then let us dance in the landscape of that sound so i call him our Pool, and we just get in that pool and we soak around and then the people leave in tune to their harmonic resonance of source for them their own unique soul print that goes out and elevates the world's consciousness so thank you so <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really fun experience to be a part of um, these I guess this experience to be redundant because I get to do you know spend time preparing make sure that i have all of the sounds that i could potentially want to use laid out in front of me and keyboard and trombone and whatever it is and now i get to intuitively flow with the flow of the class and what's happening in the room bringing things up and down and in and out and it becomes a journey for me as well and it becomes a meditation for me i get to really like stay connected the whole time and this morning i experienced a radical transformation myself going into class feeling pretty heavy didn't eat very good food last night a little uh, then by the end of class just a new person <laughs> mm, totally tuned myself <laughs> as well so i wanted to mention one other thing is um we talk about presence, being present. And when he comes in with his, his general colors he's going to paint with on the canvas of our class, he's present with what the, he's like, 
sourcing what the feedback is from the audience and then, you know, the, the students and then also me, he's tuning into me. And then he's playing a soundtrack for our own little movie film yes. presently. So one of the first things we do in class is we say, thank you for being present and thank you for being present. We say everybody's name and we say, thank you for being present. And he's present. And then when that 432 brings all of our collective presence together, every star becomes a constellation and then we have this really beautiful cosmic symphony in presence. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's that metaphor that Eckhart Tolle uses about one log comes to the fire and one log's present, but every log coming to the fire and being lit, it's a it, we're ablaze. Mm. And for wherever you are listening to this, connecting with us now, it's so important for you to understand and create this for yourself as well and to have the pure sounds i know um athena will you mention your website and if you're local to the area we'd love for you to join us and fridays we can bring guests mm -hmm. and so we'd love for just give us your website because that's been since you started friday's always been for friday's guests. been it's been bring bring a friend for free on friday it's yes. been that way for the last i mean since 1994 <laughs> and i like that because it's it's a little sample of what what's unique about the program the things that are unique is that um fitness and and body fat weight loss and lean muscle tissue um, gain is a side effect yes. being on purpose mm. is the intention and when the instruments are tuned and they're on purpose they they know exactly what to do every everybody here is a teacher everybody here i can learn something from once we're all plugged in we get the electricity of god we light up like the light bulb so this is a place on friday where you can bring somebody who's never been it might be intimidated by exercise or might be intimidated by waking up for the morning, you know, but once you do it and you see what gets created and when the sun rays come in and you get to that first band of sunlight, there's data in photonic energy. Mm. And the Egyptians knew this from thousands yes. of years ago. They would pray like this and every 26,000 years, there'd be these bands of light that would come down and they would receive the data. It would upload their DNA and from two strands to 12, they would start to become omnipresent. And that means not just viewing from my position, this is what I want, this is what I think, but I can feel what he feels and what does he want and I can feel what you feel and then I can feel what you and then before we're feeling the whole class yes. and now we don't have to say that we're separated and it's my will over his there's no right or wrong there's multiple positions to view from in this kind of harmony it's mm. so beautiful and it's boot camp Castaldi's with an S C-A-S-T-A-L-D-I boot camp Dot com, and that's where you can get some of the information. Our next class starts on March the 29th. It's not even loaded yet. but February the 29th. Sorry, yeah. February. February 29th to March 25th. It's the end of this month because it starts on a Monday. That's why it's still in February. <laughs> and um, it's four weeks, and it's really affordable. It's an hour and a half of tuning up to your highest resonance with a mastermind of constellations. Um, it's like $15 for an hour and a half. So the whole yeah. class right now is, is $300 and you get a real nice month of nutritional counseling, fitness tests, strength, endurance, yoga, the Tibetan rites, sound healing by Ryan. We have live instruments, um, yes. during the class and on Fridays you can come and you can check us out. Beautiful, beautiful. And Ryan, your website, you make music. Others who want to create, you're a composer, you do commercials. Can you give us your website for those listening? Yeah, that's ryanmatthewsmusic.com. Ryan Matthews Music. Yeah, M A T T H E W S. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful you guys are here. And as we're wrapping up, mm -hmm. one of the things that we take people to Egypt because of the mystery school training, you get immersed in this wisdom. Greg does the sound healing, the sound heart activations mm -hmm. inside the temples, inside the pyramids. And we're so grateful to carry this new frequency yes, that's yes. been this new process with us into these sacred places. If you're in town this weekend, I am teaching courses on goddess Isis oh, and the nice. activation of the rainbow embodying her ability to have goddess of 10,000 names, mm -hmm. all of these different dimensions, all of these different talents available to us. And so please find us on drsarahlarson.com. 
and Miracle. And now on iTunes. <laughs> We're now, now on, on iTunes, iTunes. Miracle Makers. So please go to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It's a beautiful experience. And, and all the there's uh, all these episodes we're recording are also videos. So you can go to drsarahlarson.com and you can see the, watch the video if you want to see us beautiful people talking and, <laughs> and uh, shining and glowing and flirting. Yes. I flirt with my wife, of course. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful you guys are with us and we will see you next week. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Miracle Makers. Thank you Thank so you. much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.